Howdy, yokes, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Edgehill. And today we're starting Christmas a little early. We spared no expense. So hold on to your butts. And we spared no expense. Because today we're bringing you Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Ethan, I know you might be asking, how is this a Christmas? You know, I was going to ask you that question, Tyler. Tell me about why this is a Christmas movie. Because, Ethan, what do you get if you're on the naughty? You get coal. And what is coal made from? Coal is made from dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. It's just that simple person about to at us on twitter cole's made from dinosaurs cole's made from dinosaurs therefore jurassic park is a christmas movie look here it is here's how i'm gonna lay it down if die hard is a christmas movie if iron man 3 is a christmas movie jurassic park this is a christmas movie movie. absolutely i'm 100 percent with now ethan today is june 16th 1993 so this movie was released five days ago (laughs) on a 63 million dollar budget hang on Hang on. <laughs> are are is, all these numbers that, correct? All the numbers are correct except for that one. <laughs> 6, 11, 1993. That was a date. Fun fact. You know how people, uh, how like we've had Disney people on before? Like Seamus can just be like, yeah, Toy Story 2 came out on, you know, March 23rd, 1999. <laughs> that I didn't even need to look that up. Like, 6 11, 93. That is when Jurassic Park came. I knew that. You just knew I that? I knew that ahead of time. You were not three months old then. I, yeah, I was c- correct. <laughs> correct. That was why I was so jazzed when I got to see this in theaters earlier this year. Because I did not get to see it when I was out in theaters originally. Because I was three months old. Right. Not not three months old. You were a week out. Yeah, I was... I was... You were 11 weeks, is what they would say. Yeah. Uh, uh... N- nine. No. How does that work? March to April, April to May, May to June. Yeah. 9307. Okay. So anyway, that was 9,307 days ago. $63 million budget made its money back. $1.029 billion worldwide. 91 critic score, 91 audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 68 on Metacritic? 68 on Metacritic. Turns out. That doesn't sound right. Uh, that's pretty... That feels pretty low to me. I would I would say... And Metacritic, Metacritic has like a timelessness factor to it, I yeah. feel like. I would say this movie... I don't know if it's gotten better over time, but it has not deteriorated the way other films do over time. Right. Like, Back to the Future has like the peeping Tom problem and... Right. This, yeah, this movie remains unproblematic and the effects still hold up. They do hold up. Better, I will than, say, better than like almost any movie of its kind. Better than a lot of movies made a decade later i would say yeah i would say it's comparable to titanic in terms of effects holding up yeah because you, um, you c- compare this to like phantom menace oh god like it's just it leaps and bounds like it, this could have been made a year ago yeah i mean on that budget no god no <laughs> <laughs> no that's what sharknado costs <laughs> right i don't um, think steven spielberg gets out of bed for less than that now <laughs> Reminds me of that scene in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You remember that? Which scene? Where he's like, I don't get out of bed for under 500000 That's what Brad Pitt sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Brad Pitt sounds like to you? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how I picture Brad Pitt in I my head. I <laughs> don't think that I have ever seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Really? Yeah, it's, I think it's just missed that one. I think... My my memory of it is overwhelmingly positive. Whether or not that's I'm sure true. it is. That was from that period in everybody's life. Well, like everybody has that period in their life where every movie they saw was awesome. Right. That is from that period in our lives. Yes. There's a very real chance that, <laughs> that if you bad. ever watch it again, it's gonna be terrible. There's very but real, there's there's very real chance it's great too, but like I remember people really liking it. Well, there's a well, there's a way to find this out. <laughs> there's a way to find out if people actually liked it. There the only way to find out if it was actually good as to watch it but it is a 59 percent critic and a 58 percent audience so i still have to watch it is what i'm hearing it, like it's right this, there man it is average rating six out of ten right um anyway i will say this movie very very good do you have a professional review for i do me? i have a professional negative review um, okay hey, where'd it go it's ted Ra- terrence raftery of i'm gonna say that whole name over i messed it up twice terrence rafferty of the new yorker says for all the ingenuity of the movie's engineering jurassic park doesn't have the imagination or the courage to take us any place we haven't been a thousand times before it's just just a creature feature on amphetamines. That dude's just wrong. The 
truth about Jurassic Park is that it has dinosaurs, Ethan. Right. Which in 1993 looked about as accurate as we could imagine dinosaurs looking. Right. Still, even like people say now, they're like, oh, well, Velociraptors had feathers. And I'm like, now they didn't. Jurassic Park says they didn't. Jurassic Park said this, they didn't. Jurassic Park also said that they combined them with frogs. Okay. So there's a reason they look like that in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Well, you know. Also, that's not how you make new dinosaurs. We'll see. I don't, we don't, we still don't have that technology. And if we we'll do, see. very smart people are not using it. I know. I'm with those smart people. Now, I have a review from Peter Howell of the Toronto Star. We've used Peter's reviews before, correct? Uh, <coughs> I can't imagine there's more than one top critic from the Toronto Star that writes about the kind of movies that we review. So probably. Anyway, he says, this movie doesn't stand the test of time. It transcends it. Gotta have it! Like it, love it. It, gotta have it. Thank you, Peter Howell, the Toronto Star. <coughs> that was a great joke you made on Twitter. I laughed. Is that good? Out loud. Yeah. What? Well, where somebody was like, or Seamus tweeted. He said, "Retweet if you like Toy Story." And somebody replied and was like, "Ah, uh, I love Toy Story." And then I replied and I was like, "Well, as long as we're doing Cold Stone sizes, I gotta have it." That was great. That was that. Like, I don't know how long you took to think of that. Moments. Oh, uh, that's Literal good. That, moments. That yeah, that's how I figured. I was just like, Ty just had a brain wave. Just yeah, done. Boom, bing, good, bang, boom. Good joke. Good joke. Now, Ethan, we we are gonna do a quick binary review because. Because people have told us the show is not enough about movies. So, binary review on uh, Jurassic Park, Ethan. It's a one. One, yeah. Oh my god, if you don't see this movie, don't talk to me. Right, you have That's to see this true. movie. That's not true. You do have to see this movie. I will also say this, though. Like, it needs to go on your list of, like, if you've never seen a movie, this is going to be in the first one. Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, I would say you have to watch Star Wars Original Trilogy, Jaws, this. Honestly, I don't know that's about if, it. If Jaws is sliced bread, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Because, like, it's much more... I mean, Star Wars is a whole different thing. This is just... This is really just Jaws on crack. Yeah. It is. Like, I don't I don't find that as a negative. Like, the guy that I wrote my negative review from, he seems to think that's a negative, but he's he's absolutely right, though. Like, it, it, it is Jaws to the nth degree. I, now, since Jaws isn't in our big list, and we're not going to get to the big list to the end, Jaws versus Jurassic Park, what do you think is a better film? And I have an opinion here. I'm going to... I have to take nostalgia factor out of it, which is tough for me with this movie. Like this, this, this was like this was my favorite movie for a long time. I this to me, if you come to me and say Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time, that is a perfectly acceptable. Right, that there there are certain movies that like you don't even get questioned. Right, if you I say, would say, if you say you're allowed to say this. You're also allowed to say Jaws. You're also allowed to say Titanic. You're allowed to say uh, Empire Strikes Back. You're allowed to say New Hope. Yeah, uh, Back to like, the Future. You, you yeah, you have to. You don't yeah. That's that is an acceptable answer where you don't nobody will look at you and go really Jurassic Park really Jurassic Park really <laughs> I did yeah but I did get to see this in the theaters earlier this year and I can tell you that like there's something to it being seeing it in the theaters I believe it I heard that the the re-release was very good I did not get a chance to see it well so it it's been re-released twice now um because there was like a Jurassic Park 3D yes I'm familiar yeah and that's what that's what got it a lot of the negative reviews in Rotten Tomatoes I was looking through them and there was you know seven or eight or whatever and and half of those were man they really killed it with the 3d really well, yeah. people did not like the 3d yeah, apparently was... the, apparently the 3d just ruined it that's not good i was reading some of the reviews positive on the 3d side oh well i i saw it in 2d that is the way to see films yeah as long as people are curious about what my process is at the movies, it is a 2D film. Yeah. And it wasn't even a re-release that I saw it. It was like a Fathom Events thing, and they're this company that just does, like, one day... I, it is a re-release, but it's not like a full re-release. Like, it, I, the, you saw it one time, one day. Right, there was one theater playing it once. Right, there was one showing, but it's all... I mean, it's all over the place. They're a big company. But there's, yeah, one theater showing at one time. Anyway, anyway, Ethan. 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 Me. Ethan. Me. Duncan. I want to get... we Because we've had a guest these past four weeks, I think, Five. I don't know. Five? I Five can't weeks, keep yeah. track of time. Oh, it was Toy yeah, Story Isaac. 1, 2, 3, and then Crimes of I Grindelwald know. with Wanathon, and then uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. What a delightful film. With with Isaac Carlson, a delightful person. Now, before we get into our next segment, I do want to ask Jaws or Jurassic Park. You didn't answer me. I'm going to take Jurassic Park. I'm going to take Jaws. Um, that's all you get. That's it? That's all you get. I'm not arguing with you. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're both good answers. It's a dumb dichotomy. Right. Uh, here's the thing, Ethan. We haven't had a guest. We've had a guest for five weeks now, which means our segments have been gone. So I want to get back to a, a, a fan favorite, toothpaste and toothpaste orange juice. Toothpaste and orange juice. 
Now, if you're a new listener to the show, what this is, Ethan and I talk about something that puts a bad taste in our mouth, something that just ruins your morning. And bacon and eggs is all about having a good morning. Right. Right. So, Ethan, what we do is we count down three, two, one, and then when you would say go, you say what's been bothering you or what gives you a bad taste in your mouth. Okay. 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 So, three, two, one. Shorts and cold talk weather. When you have headphones on. Ooh, I already know what you're saying, but give me a more cloutful example. <laughs> a more cloutful example. So, yes. so th- this has always bothered me. Um, is like when people who try to talk to you when you clearly have earphones in. And, it drives like, me crazy. If you're if you've got you know like Apple AirPods, they're pretty small. Uh, it's it's forgivable to not notice that when you look at somebody in there and they've got like headphones on. And if you're and great if you're doing something where like you probably need to be able to interact with the public, then I understand it. But like if you're just chilling, people are like, hey, I'm in the, I'm just like this. That was me pulling the earphone out of my ear, going, what? I didn't hear you. And then you look like the bad guy, right? And then I I look like bad guys, right? The incompetent bad guys. But it's worse. Like I just got these new uh, the Bose the QC35 wireless. I love Please, them. Please, I want them for Christmas. I love Either them. E- Ethan okay. or person listening. I love them. They are wonderful. I cannot, it like, and, and I hear you already, man. I hear you. Not you, not man. I hear you already, listener, being like, well, Ethan, you're going to recommend spending $350 on a pair of headphones? And I'm going to be like, yes. I would have paid $500 for these headphones. I'm relieved I did not have to. It was... You described the experience as going into Best Buy and like, it was like a commercial when the dude was like, yo, have you tried these? Right. And you know how in headphone commercials or like all kinds of commercials where they put the headphones on and the world is sound. And like, you, now you just, you you can see color, you 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 can can see sounds and hear colors. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You can normally see colors. I know. Right. (laughs) But like, and I put these on, and it was like I felt like I was, you know, experiencing the song for the first time. I don't remember what song it was. A song I heard before. Young Bloods by Five Sauce. No, that is a great one to listen to with these headphones. But anyway, they are noise canceling. And when I have these headphones on, I am dead to the world. No, like, <laughs> no outside communication. Somebody was trying to talk to me, and this was this was like, um, you know, in in a in a house or whatever. So it's it's reasonable they were trying to talk to me, but like all of a sudden this person was just like waving at me and. I pulled the earphone off and I was like, I'm sorry, what's up? And they were like, I've been talking to you for five minutes. I was like, <laughs> I did not hear a single iota of sound. No yeah, chance. I, was, I don't know what I, you said. I don't even know what the conversation was. I didn't know you were in this room. What, while you're on the topic, do you have recommendations for people who have recently invested in nice headphones? Songs to best experience them. Songs to best experience. Young Bloods by Five Sauce is actually a really good one. Um, re- Anything by Five Seconds Summer, they have a pretty good um dynamic range in their songs like they they yes. use the full spectrum of sound and i will say a lot of you know i'm not crazy about edm uh the electronic dance music but there's a lot of like the pop edm djs that do that really well as well like zed and martin garrix and avici r.i.p and uh david getta a lot of Is their avici songs dead? yeah avici died dang R.I.P. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. Oh, but they and, and I mean I get it. Their songs are like intricately crafted to be like that. But when you can really hear the full spectrum of everything, it's incredible. Imagine Dragons, really good. Any of those like big bands? How much time do you spend? I go back and forth on this with my personal experience with music. How much time do you spend when you have your headphones on, strictly focusing on music? Fairly little. Um, but like this weekend, I found myself on a plane twice, where I was able to just kind of like look out the window with my headphones on and just it exist in the music so you don't do that here's i found this to be a problem with myself is like i'll get on my phone and then i'll be listening to a song i listen to a lot of like big vocals not necessarily like big pop sounds but like big vocal sounds and i'll find myself missing huge chords because i'm distracted by my phone or by folding laundry or whatever it is what what is an example of what you're listening to like my most played song on my spotify for 2017 was hide and seek by imogen heap oh so you got that like that block chord vocal sound right let me tell you songs like that sound incredible with the bose qc35 <laughs> this is not an uh this is not an ad for, no for we those. no longer we're have not, our amazon affiliate so we cannot get you any sort of discount yeah, not, code or code at all we're not sponsored by bose although bose if you're listening, I love these headphones more than my right hand. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of great songs like that. Um, and there are a lot of pop songs. I, 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 th- these headphones have given me a new appreciation for pop music. Oh, I don't have a problem with pop music. I'm all in on pop. Well, man, I'm not all in. On no, pop I, music. I, I'm, I 
particularly haven't been all in on pop music for the last few years, but like these headphones have given me appreciation for like top 40 music and it's almost like Easter eggs in the songs. Yeah, I noticed that. I, I listened to, you gave me them and I listened to The Sound of Silence by uh, Disturbed. You let yeah. me just wear them for a few minutes. I wore them for like two minutes. Really, I wanted to listen to the last two minutes, but I wasn't was, stopping you. I know, I know. I just, yeah. I felt like I was enjoying it too much. <laughs> I felt like I was bothering people with how happy I was. <laughs> The last, the last, oh my god, the last two of minutes of song. Disturbed, The Sound of Silence, is one of the best moments in music to happen in the last decade. Was that in the last decade? The Sound of Silence was disturbed by Disturbed was last year. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty I sure. I did not know that. It was either, it might have been 16, but it was not longer ago than 2016. I would have thought it was like 2004. <laughs> I have a great story behind that song. Um... I was, we were playing it in the car, right, when it came out, me and my girlfriend, and she was like, I love this song. And I'm like, yeah, I love this song. I love this song when I was a kid. And and she was like, yeah, and then got real quiet. And like 15 minutes later, she was like, okay, I got to ask something. How have you liked this song since you were a kid? It came out like last week. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I pulled my phone up and started playing Sounds of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel and she was like oh I knew that dang I did not know it was Simon and Garfunkel but I knew it was not a new song I didn't I knew it wasn't an original well I mean anybody who's watched uh, 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 Arrested Development knows it's not original really? yeah there's that, that there's a, like a huge joke in every season of that show where characters characters will just like stare into the camera and they'll start playing the beginning of that song hmm. hello darkness my old friend yeah that's how it starts yeah anyway my freaking orange juice and toothpaste ethan i've been mad about this since what did you even say I, I can't remember i can cite this i've been mad about this since sophomore year of high school i know I know exactly who this was that was doing it okay so grown men and this person was not a grown man at the time but grown men out there exist who wear shorts and sandals regardless of the weather they're like here's the thing man no you don't understand it's about by out listen man so when it's cold outside the blood you need the blood blood flow to be better so you wear shorts because then your body knows to send blood to your extremities and then like your feet stay warm and your legs stay warm and the nerves in your legs don't really like they don't respond the same way as the shut up wear pants you look like an idiot you're making me stressed i hate the way you make me feel wear some pants get over your stupid science i hate it i don't care wear pants like a grown man you stop wearing flip-flops Period. I'm done with flip-flops. Flip-flops are a comfort clothes. You wear them in your home, and while you walk the dog, you are in public. Wear pants and wear shoes. We're... No, I don't want to argue with the... you about this anymore. You wear pants, and that's how it is. I'm so mad. You do not look cool or nuanced or interesting or artistic or anything. You're not making a good fashion statement. You look like a jerk. Put pants on. <laughs> Although I would say even no what... no 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 wear pants. Hold on though. Let me let me let me piggyback that real quick. <laughs> even worse than that is grown men any time of the year wearing jeans with flip flops. Oh God, we don't need to have this conversation, Quentin Dill. It looked cool on you because you were short and stocky and handsome. Okay, Quentin Dill went to our high school. He was short, stocky, and handsome, and that was fine. Guess what, Chicken Legs McGee? You look like an idiot. <laughs> Wearing boot-cut <laughs> jeans with you, flip-flops. With flip-flops. Like so that you're... So that, American Eagle flip -flops. Yeah, your jeans begin to get a part of them that is shorter because it's worn off by the ground. <laughs> Wear shoes with jeans. I've also learned that my mother was lying to me and that, well, this is kind of coming back around in fashion, and I'm I'm allowing it more and more but it turns out you're not just supposed to wear your running shoes with every single outfit you own correct you're supposed to wear like grown man shoes, like loafer i mean not with every single outfit the point of the fact of the matter ethan is you need to you are not cool because you're wearing shorts and sandals in the cold you're not interesting either this isn't gonna get you an extra drink at the bar i get it you have extra pockets in your cargo short to carry your tuba mouthpiece shut up wear pants <laughs> i wonder what you were gonna get there <laughs> <laughs> oh man god i hate those guys i get it like i get it i get it i get it i, get I it. love pants pants are awesome pants are awesome pants. you know who looks good in pants everyone Everybody. you know who looks bad in shorts most people <laughs> most people quentin dill notable exception <laughs> Like, there are definitely people where I've been like, you look cool in shorts, but most people, I'm like, man, pants are just such a cleaner line. Like, it's a much cleaner line. You look much better in photographs wearing pants. This has been photography with Ty and Ethan. Yes, you look much better in photographs wearing pants. Okay, back to the 
biscuit. Yeah. What? No. No. <laughs> this is not ear biscuits. <laughs> I now have not back to a podcast. Now back to the biscuits. I have not while. listened to a podcast in a long time because I've just finished listening to all seven Harry Potter books for the second time this year. Surprising. And that I takes a long through, time. Made it through half four before I was like, I can't finish it right now. Nope. I finished all seven. I am now uh, almost done with Ready Player One. Oh, oh, Ready Player One. That's the follow up. That's Harry Potter and the book eight. I've listened. I've dealt with Ready Player One too much this year. I need. Here's. I need a longer time frame before I would listen to Ready Player One again, because right now I'm just like, okay, maybe this book is kind of dumb. Wade. Wade. I have so much advice for Wade. Why did you buy a sex robot? Here's how Ready Player <laughs> Why One did is. You is buy a sex ro- <laughs> Why was that a necessary part of the book? <laughs> Why did I need to know that? Because here's what happened. is The truth about Ready Player One is it's actually the story of Harry's children. After 19 years, when they discovered that the internet is better than magic. And and that's how it all came to be. All right, so for people that want us to talk more about the movie, let's talk about this movie. I I really enjoy Jurassic Park. I think it's like, like... The movie doesn't need the monsters to be scary, but isn't a scary movie and has the monsters. Yeah, it pulls it off. Like, at no point, I don't even think there's, like, jump scares that mess with me. There's one that I can think of. When the goat hits the roof of the car. Yeah. I'm like, I've seen this movie 25 times. I was not expecting that. Didn't see that coming. Every time. No, this is a great movie. This is, it is very similar to Jaws, and I don't think I realized how similar to Jaws it was until I was sitting here thinking about Jaws watching Jurassic Park. Can I ask you a question about Jurassic Park? Uh, yeah. So, Sam Neill's character. Alan Grant. Never gonna Alan get him Grant. out of Montana. Why? That's like the first thing. The guy in the first scene when when um, the lawyer is like, well, we want to get Alan Grant. And the, the digger's like, Alan Grant, you're never going to get him out of Montana. And they're like, why not? And he's like, because he's a digger. He is a and digger. And then you cut to Alan Grant and anyway, Hammond's with Sam Alan Neil's, Grant. Sam Neill's character talks to Jeff Goldblum's character. Did I miss a detail? I've seen this movie plenty of times. I have seen the first act only not as much as I should have. Like, I find myself having a hard time caring about this movie pre-park. And I know there's that great scene where... Dr. Grant explains, like, Velociraptors hunt in packs, so by, by, while, the, while the first one is having a staring contest with you and making fun of your shorts and flip-flops in the middle of wintertime, the other two kill you. Well, this right. movie has a similar issue to Phantom Menace. In that it, it, but it pulls it off 150 times better. But it's a similar issue where, like, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the first 12 minutes of the movie. Does he say, I don't know who Jeff Goldblum's character is. So he's Ian Malcolm. I know that. I know his name. How does, I, 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 the first I remember seeing Jeff Goldblum, even while watching it today, was in the, in the Jeeps. Is that accurate? No, he's in the helicopter. Oh, he's in the helicopter. He's in the helicopter. He's the guy. Is that, that his, his first introduction? Yeah, he's the guy the lawyer brought. Okay. So a, a, Hammond went and got Alan and Ellie to sign off on the park and the lawyer brought Ian Malcolm to sign off on the park. Gotcha. Because Hammond well, is I do not Hammond is like, I bring you scientists and you give me a rock star. He is a rock star. Because he's supposed to be like he's Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's like a pop scientist. He's like a pop scientist, yeah. More like Bill Nye. Yeah, I mean I guess so. But, but Bill he's not, Nye's not a real scientist. Neil deGrasse Tyson is. Well Jeff Goldblum Ian Malcolm's a real scientist. Okay. He writes books and stuff. He's a he's a chaos dition. Chaos dition. Oh yeah, he, he studies he does chaos the thing with the yeah, water the thing with the water drop. Yeah. Okay, so I did. Okay, so I, I'm dissatisfied with his introduction, and then him and Sam Neill have a conversation about kids. And does Sam Neill say he wants kids? What is the result of that conversation? Sam Neill, does, I know later, Sam Neill hates kids at the beginning. Okay, doesn't want kids. Like that is like a flip flop. Yes, by the end. That is, is the, that he's. That's like, the point. Right. Is that is he's it, like he, I yeah. love kids. Yeah, he meets Timmy and loves kids. Because of Timmy. Because at first, when they first get in the Jeeps, and then whatnot in the Jeeps and the Explorers, he's like, I do not want to ride with this kid. This kid will not shut up. He won't stop asking me about my book. And Alan's just like, I don't want to deal with this. And Ian's like, yeah, I love kids. Got a couple. Got, yeah, I've got I got a few kids and a bunch of wives. I'm always looking for another future Mrs. X. Yeah. Are you, Dr. Malcolm, are you married? Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, the Jeff Goldblum's job there is to be quippy. And cool. Yeah, he's supposed to be cool, but he's very quippy. He says like a lot of the great lines in the movie yeah he does well life uh finds a way. way yeah and the first it's ooh and ah and then there's running and screaming <laughs> but yeah i mean so john hammond essentially builds this park and thinks it's a great idea he's like i should have built it in florida no you shouldn't have this is a terrible idea <laughs> yeah he figures out by the end that it was a bad idea but yeah this was like a terrible idea of a park 
Like, this is a dangerous thing that they've got going here. Right, it's not a zoo or, like, a nature preserve. Like, these are dinosaurs. I think it's interesting. Like, you can try to get against the science. I think it self-contains its own science pretty well. Yeah, everything that happens has a way out. Everything's explained pretty well. And, like, Ian was right. Life does, uh, find a way. Right, well, he set himself up for that one, though. I mean, yeah, obviously. But that that is definitely... I mean, that was the problem, though, is, like, one of the many problems. It's You're not supposed to, like, have trouble guessing what's going to happen in this movie. Right. When he says life finds a way, you're supposed to be like, oh, life found a way. Look at that. <laughs> right. It's not like a, you're waiting for the twist. Right. <laughs> like, you know, the dinosaurs are going to get out. There is a little bit of a twist, though. I mean, like the the t-rex saves them yeah from the raptors i think the the only thing that gets me is chris pratt trained the raptors right so why were they attacking laura dern because chris pratt didn't <laughs> chris pratt sh- trained the raptors <laughs> later like 26 years later or whatever yeah. 23 years later however many years yeah. later yeah he trained the raptors later muldoon yeah, didn't then... train the raptors uh, muldoon is that the dude's name the, the yeah the guy that, that doesn't trust the raptors the, like crotchety cowboy australian cowboy guy is he australian I don't know what he is. I can't remember. Muldoon is oh, his name. Oh, crikey. I don't think he's Australian. He might be. I don't know. I can't hear his accent in my head now. Let me ask you a question. Without looking, would you have known that the actor who plays Newman is named Wayne Knight? I would not. He's Newman. I would have said he was Newman, and then if you asked me to cite his name and gave me the choices Wayne Knight or Dennis Nedry, Nedry? I would have known it wasn't Dennis Nedry because that's his name in Jurassic Park. I would have. I wouldn't have known that. I knew that, yeah. They set themselves up for a sequel with the Barbara saw can is that was that what was going on there no is it just is a, it answered in the end it's just a good shot oh. yeah i don't think they for a million dollars i could not tell you what happens in the sequels to this movie because they they it... vince vaughn is in one of them at least he's in the second i think do they go back to no because they don't go back to um to isla nublar until jurassic world the first one they go to the lost world yeah the second to the second and third take place on isla sorna who the other island i think yeah 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 because the first time, because yeah. the first time they come back on the park stuff is in Jurassic World, potentially the second one. Because there's like a Jurassic Park jeep lying upside down in Jurassic World Two that yes. Owen hides behind. Yes. So yeah, the first. There's one. also Jurassic Park jeeps in Jurassic World One. Yeah. So they don't they don't go back to Isla Sorn or Isla Nublar until so no the Barbasol can does not have a payoff. There is no there's nothing there. Really? Yeah. It's just an interesting shot. Like that that th- was just like well we're gonna pan to it. Hold hold. All right, and it's buried by mud. That was a good shot because it was. It was the dino DNA or whatever, right? Dino DNA. Yeah, it's the uh, Dude, embryos. Do you remember this weekend? There's a little conversation to be had. There's a. This is a little. Uh, I'm, I'm driving us into a new direction here. This weekend, we asked Derek who Doctor DNA was. Yeah, you just kind of said it to the remember. car, and Derek answers, and he was like, "Yeah, he's the doctor from uh, Jurassic Park," t- and he answers and describes him as the Asian guy. Did he? Right? No. He, he does not describe him as the animated he thing in the little movie. No. I thought he Derek did. Derek was like, Derek was like, yeah, he's just the, he's the Asian dude from Jurassic Park. Oh, no, that's, that that's, that's collects, Henry Wu. Yeah, that collects the DNA and makes the new dinosaur. And I was like, really? That makes sense because our friend Casey was wearing a Dr. DNA shirt when we told him we were doing Jurassic Park. He said that adds up. And <laughs> Derek was like, oh, I totally made that up. I have no idea who Dr. DNA was. Dr. DNA. Dr. DNA is the animated little character in yeah, the little video. Yeah. Dr. DNA. Well, so like I didn't realize what you were reading and we were like in a, a like a van in Florida listening to like Florida pop music. And you were like, yeah, who's Dr. DNA? And I thought he was like the producer <laughs> of the song we were listening to. <laughs> nope. Uh, but yeah, he's the he's the. DNA strand, the dino DNA. Yep, 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 yep. The mosquitoes, even back then, laid on animals, even dinosaurs. And then you get dino DNA. Dino DNA. I will say, just as a little tangent here, we did get to go to Harry Potter world this weekend. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The Wizarding and World of Harry Potter, part of Universal Orlando Resort. Now, this was your first trip to Universal Orlando Resort. It was Orlando my Resort. first trip. I've never been to Universal Orlando Resort. Resort. And let me tell you, from the outside, like when we were leaving, uh, it looked exactly like what Nickelodeon said it looked like <laughs> back in like the 90s. With the big globe? With the big globe and the, and the gate thing. Yeah. Because they used to have like a Nickelodeon part of the theme park. Did they? Was that all universal? I think so. Yeah. So you went the first time. What was your do you what it what was your view of theme parks that were theme forward instead of ride forward going into this? And how 
how has that opinion changed or has it um i'm usually partial to and then and it's basically it's like a more like a geographical thing for us than anything but i'm i'm typically parks that are ride forward as opposed to theme forward because like the the only example that we had here in va and this isn't even the case anymore is like it used to be paramount king's dominion yeah and so they had a bunch of like and Carowinds was the same way in Charlotte. Um, they had a lot of like Paramount themed ride, like Top Gun themed rides and stuff like that. But then they lost that contract in like the early 2000s. So I'd never even been to Kings Dominion or Carowinds while they were Paramount Parks. They're still like Snoopy filled. Yeah, there's right? still some like remnants of it. But like the Intimidator 305 is like a NASCAR ride. Right. That's a Dale Earnhardt themed ride. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's awesome. Yeah, that thing's rad. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it is. yeah, and like Carowinds used to have like a Batman roller coaster, and now they don't. It's called like Nightwind or whatever. Ooh. Um. But yes, yeah, so I I've, I haven't been to a whole lot of. We've been to Disney, but been I think to Disney. We went, we've been to Six Flags. We went to Disney at a time when I don't think I care. Like I was at the only stage in my life, or not the only stage, but I was at like the peak stage of that, my yeah, life. Yeah, that was the peak of I me was, not giving a crap about Disney World. Yeah, of like my disinterest in Disney was peak. Like if I went back to Disney World. Now, I think because be of the podcast, to, a lot more, and because enjoy. of the fan base that we built around the podcast and the people I interact with on a daily basis, and people like Seamus, and also the introduction of Pixar Pier, I think all of those things would add to me enjoying Disney World. But as super fratty sophomores in now, college, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the ideal place for us to go. Now, we'll say this <laughs> about Universal. Universal, if you took Harry Potter World out of Universal, that place would shut down within six weeks. What would Universal? Universal Orlando, yeah, the, the two parts. Yeah, no. Without Harry that Potter, was World, a, you have nothing. That was a crappy theme park. I disagree. I thought the uh, the Kong ride, the, as far as rides, the rides go, are there. The Kong ride was sweet. Hulk is a cool roller coaster. It's just all like it's it's laid out wrong. Like there's a lot I, of yeah, stuff I, definitely I don't thought... care about, and especially on the Universal Orlando Resort or the Universal Studio side, not the Islands of Adventure side. Everything is outdated. Yeah, it was like Men in Black. Like Men in Black, The Mummy, The Simpsons, like stuff from the early 2000s. Yeah. That just doesn't uh, have the kind of longevity that you thought it was going to. Like, yeah, Men in Black is dead. Yeah, I, I I don't know why they don't update that ride because I feel like Universal has got to have, I mean, they could have, they, they produced Ready Player One, didn't they? Yeah, they've got properties. Like, they yeah, they could easily facelift that to be like a Ready Player One There ride. was not enough Jurassic Park. No, there wasn't. You could literally have an entire Jurassic Park. Right, because, like, the Kong movies are terrible. Yeah, they facelift the Jurassic Park for Kong. Yeah, yeah. Um, It was weird. Brendan Fraser still looked great on the Mummy ride. You didn't ride that one, but that was a sweet ride. Yeah, y'all just disappeared. Ride. Well, I, I don't... All I know is, look, we got up and we're like, we're going to the Mummy ride and Jonathan was like, me too. But we weren't trying to, like, abandon anybody. I think we thought everybody else was like, we're holding these seats. But, anyway, no, I'm not got like to upset. walk in. I just... <clears throat> Oh. You, you had to walk into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter for the first time. Now, I've got some thoughts on this, but I had been there before. I went so there I will, three years my ago. My first recommendation to anybody going to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, start on the Universal Studios side, so the Diagon Alley side. Yeah. Because the walk up on the other side is much less impressive. Well, we didn't, we didn't stop and look at Hogwarts at all. No, I was a little frustrated about that. But I was surprised by that. Like we walked past it, and then I turned around and I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's yeah." I was like, "Can Hogwarts. we?" Uh, 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 any, but no, okay. Yeah. But and and you know, the, it, there's there was the, there's and this is gonna be the problem with all the Florida theme parks is like there are too many people packed into Harry Potter World. Yeah. It's not big enough. Like it needs to be, and I get that they're getting there. Like they're adding on like a whole another half of the Hogsmeade side. The Hogsmeade side to me was I don't want to say disappointing, but I was underwhelmed. Well, until recently, until last September, it had the whole dragon roller coaster thing. Right, and it had the Hogwarts ride. Is there is that still there? Hogwarts the ride is it? still there. It's in Hogwarts. Okay, we just didn't. We do just it. didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess the people we were with had done it, and we're like, that was dumb. So I would trust that judgment. Like the we we did the uh, Gringotts ride, and that was pretty dumb. Yeah, I I think that there's some something to be learned there. But like the Diagon Alley side of Harry Potter World is very cool. It is extremely cool. It is extremely cool. Um, that go ahead. You just gotta you gotta let yourself enjoy it. Like you can't look. And this is the same way I'm sure at Disney World for your average fan but you can't look too close. I think you can look close. I mean, most things hold up, but then like. <sighs> I think that Universal could do a little bit better with their staff. Oh, I agree. There was let me let me break down. Walking into Diagon Alley, 
is one of the most magical experiences you can have. I'll say that straight For sure. Up. You walk through and they've got it like domed in a really cool way that you are, you feel like you're inside of it. Yeah. And the buildings look like they are from the movies, which matters. And they look right and they look good. And what I'm most excited about is going into the shops, buying the wands and interacting with everything. But just looking at it is enough. Yes. Like it like is that very... Is, it's, very cool. It, yeah, like it's extremely. It is an art project, right? Like that, that is unparalleled. That first street scene where you like you walk in through the brick wall and it's like you've got the whole street there with Gringotts at the end with the dragon. The dragon. Like that is a cool thing that they've got there. Where it falls apart for me, here's here's where it gets even stronger is the wand shops. Yes, the wands they've got right. They could do more, but the wands I think that is so fun for me. Like, yes. I am totally willing to spend $50 on a piece of designed resin that I can only get here. And I know that I can't only get it there, and I can buy them, like, online, and I can get them in other places. But there is a certain satisfying feeling about getting it there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm willing to do that. That, to me, is a worthwhile And purchase. I wish that there was more of, like, a, you know, the wand choosing thing isn't just for kids. Right. Because it is, like just for kids right and we didn't do the like stand in line and have your wand pick you thing no because you can't you can't they were just I, I i tried there were only kids doing it okay um but i will say this that's where it gets stronger where it falls apart for me is almost everything else the rest of the shops have bad merchandise yeah like if you're not buying wands you are buying uninteresting harry potter merchandise i like the robes i would never do the cosplay thing it's just not for me so i don't think i would buy the robes. did you go in madame malkin's i did not go into no Madame so Malkins. that's a cool shop okay that's a really cool shop because that's got all the like the formal wear like the war the robes the ties the the hats all that stuff that right. is like a well-designed well laid out nice looking shit it doesn't feel like a gift shop okay and i but would say I the say... wand shop is great the sweet shops are good they're like the the yeah the sweet shops are great Oh, I was I was unimpressed with the sweet shops. I felt like I was interested because they've got all the necessities, but I didn't feel like they went past that. I would agree with that as well. I feel the same way about uh, Weasley, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, the joke shop. Like I felt like Weasley, Weasley, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes and uh, what's the candy? Honey Dukes. Both of those were very cleverly designed to look like they had much more merchandise than right. they did. They're close. They're closer than like the just the merch shops. But in the merch shops, what got me was I wasn't interested in any of the house merch. I liked the uh, the only thing I liked was the little cotton knit gloves, and I didn't yeah. end up buying them. I thought those looked cool, but I wasn't interested in any of the house merch. And I also liked the house sweaters, but those were over a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I didn't buy one of those. And there wasn't, there wasn't enough variety. There wasn't enough, like, they don't play up to the Pottermore thing enough. And I'm going to reiterate this to Pottermore. Like, you need to have a merch store for every house. There's a lot of, um, th that is where Harry Potter lacks compared to most huge franchises. Right. Well, I, I don't know if the other franchises do better. Like, I think if we went to the Star Wars part of a Disney park, we would be, we would find a disappointing amount. Like, we would find a lot of lightsabers we were interested in, but you would not find, maybe I'm wrong about this, but you would not find satisfactory Rebel Empire Jedi Sith merch. You are incorrect. You think so? Yes. I could go I to the Star Wars store at Disney Springs and spend a thousand dollars easily. 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 I went. I went in fully prepared. I had. Because there's like a build your own lightsaber thing where they like yeah, go through with cool. you and you pick the parts and everything. And they let anybody do that. It's not just kids. I went. Like I watched parts. a grown man build his own lightsaber and it was awesome. I went in fully prepared to spend more than a hundred dollars on a prop or replica that I thought was exceptionally interesting like i was ready for that yeah i bought a t-shirt because i felt like i needed a t-shirt to take pictures in right that was it i did not see with the exception of who what wand did you what wands did you get uh i got the severus snape and the victor crumb wands the wands are, are cool like yeah spend all your money on i like wands. almost all of the wands like i wouldn't buy all of them but all of them i'm like this is an interesting character to it yeah i agree i got slughorn and emily got queenie oh yeah i got a newt for uh for kate uh but i was ready to buy like a prop or something that was a little bit more expensive and a little bit like less practical. Not that the wands are practical, they don't do anything. But you know what I'm saying? And I just, I did not see a single thing I was interested in except for Lucius Malfoy's wand. But Jonathan has that, and that would have been like a. Yeah. Um, there was a couple cool things at Borgen and Burke's, actually. I think they did a better shop job with that shop than most of the shops. Yeah, that, that was the, the merch only there shop at least that had, had character. variety. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you could get, like, Quidditch robes, but most of it was Gryffindor stuff. I did not see Ravenclaw Quidditch robes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, there was, a, yeah. there was a bunch of Gryffindor Quidditch stuff that was cool. Yeah. You couldn't buy, like, a Nimbus 2000 prop. You couldn't buy... Yeah, you could. How do you feel about... You, you could. could. Yeah, you, can get, you could get full, like, length models, and you could also get little uh, desktop ones. Huh. Maybe I just didn't see the right stuff. And you, get, you could get all the balls... 
I thought the balls were cool. Yeah, you could get like a well, the 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 bludgers and the bats were like made out of plastic, but the quaffle was like actually a ball. That's cool. There was uh there was another question I had for you uh about the parks, and it's gone from me. I don't know. It was a really cool thing to go to. I, it sounds like I'm just complaining about it. But the one thing I think is that Universal could learn a lot in general, but especially in Harry Potter world, they could learn a lot from Disney as far as their staff. Yeah, I would say the staff was definitely it's, something that fell apart. As far as like training the staff to buy into it. To be, yeah. I want to go in. There was only one place I walked in. I was wearing a Minnesota t-shirt that one of our fans sent us and the guy in the shop was like mm, must have been a long broom flight from minnesota and i was like well he said it with a british accent no. but anyway that was the closest that experience got to what i was looking for but even him i could tell he was like half-assing it. right and people kept talking about how stan shunpike didn't understand why people were falling over in front of him really i did not know yeah that. no, no but, uh your your brother said that or i don't know if i'm allowed to say i was that. busy getting a loaded baked potato um our our moderators they they said that but they were like yeah um can we follow over in front of you and he was just kind of like why he wasn't like you fell over which is for. wild because that tells me that, like they were the first people to come up and think of doing that right like that that's what that whole scene's about to me <laughs> and like granted well, i didn't come think about on doing then that. i'm not surprised i didn't think about doing that i tell my harry potter pop that all the time because it constantly falls over yeah you know what doesn't fall over this harry potter brickhead you got a harry potter brickhead? i have a harry potter i have the i have the who am i hedwig brickheads <laughs> you can't see it everybody but even that is showing me. Harry Potter and Hedwig. <laughs> Little Lego. Yo, break. speaking of, did, did Funko Pop figures exist when um Hunter Wells? Hey Hunter. I know you're listening. Did Funko Pop figures exist when Hunter Wells was collecting Vinyl Mations? Vinyl Mations. You just said a word I forgot existed. Because that was something I always thought was cool, was the like, that Disney had the little vinyl Mickeys that were painted and looked like other stuff. Yes. But then I was introduced to the concept of Funko Pop figures, and I was like, these are so much better. Yeah, these are better in every way. They're adorable. <laughs> Yes, they are. Except uh, for Korg. Korg, a little bit terrifying. Big, dead, white eyes. A little terrifying. Yeah, but Jurassic Park. I won't lie to you, man. I loved Jurassic Park. You know why? Because I watched it casually, and I still enjoyed every bit of it. I was able to just hop into it, continue enjoying it, hop out of it, maybe check some tech messages, this, that, and the other, come back. Okay, raptors are chasing them now. All good. I need to pause real quick. I don't need to pause the recording. I need to pause real quick and tell you what just happened to me. This, I think, is the coolest thing. No. Second coolest thing. But this is the coolest thing that I, my iPhone has done in months. Okay, okay? what happened? Uh, somebody just texted me and said, what's your email? And the predictive text bar just had my email already listed. And all I had to nice. do was press the button and it sent. Who said, Who texted you? Chris Millahan. Oh, he's going to invite you to his holiday He party. is. Sarah texted me like five days ago and I did not respond. I think we were getting on a I, plane. I got that. I got that text just now. Well, not just now. I got the email earlier today. That's um, what I meant to say. No, the coolest thing that my iPhone did recently was something asked me for a like a code, like it texted me a code. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to input the code and it was like, you want to input this code from your messages? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Anyway, Jurassic Park. I love this movie. I, there was a long, long, long time where I would have said this is my favorite movie. Um, and I watched, I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid. Like, Is it no longer your favorite movie? I would say, yeah, there are movies that, that I've, I don't know if there are movies that I've enjoyed more, but there are movies that I like better. Interesting. But I was like six, like from six to the point where I started really thinking about movies, I would say Jurassic Park was probably my favorite movie but and for whatever reason it's always a movie i have a hard time remembering to say when people talk ask me about my favorite movies it to me i know we already said that it does qualify as a favorite movie like it, it, it's allowed to be your favorite movie but to me when somebody asks favorite movie blockbusters are blocked out, out of my out mind. immediately and that's the thing yeah. is like it is perfectly acceptable for you person to say that Jurassic Park or you know Star Wars Empire or Jaws is your favorite movie. For people You can even say like Infinity War or Winter Soldier or whatever. Like those are all perfectly good examples. No, nah, I'm gonna immediately have questions. Those are is not no those are not on the exempt list for me. Infinity War is nope. Nope. I cannot wait until Avengers 4 comes out and people realize that I was right. That Infinity War is like a seven out of ten at best. Mm, I think you're gonna be wrong. I I, I hope you're I wrong. I don't think I am because I think that Avengers Four is just going to make Infinity War pointless. I hope you're wrong because it will have it's it will undo all the consequences of Infinity War and have its own set of consequences, and that is all that is going to matter. It is Deathly Hallows Part One for the MCU. Deathly Hallows Part One is an underrated film. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it's not the greatest thing that's ever happened, and it did not deserve the ending. It is a poorly told story that had a great ending. And you know what? Deathly Hallows 
Us Part 1 introduced its characters. So does Infinity No, it doesn't. Yes, it no, does. it doesn't. You have to see 20 movies to get Infinity War. I mean, you still won't know who, like, Ebony Maw is. Like, that's a new character. Yeah, you don't know who Ebony Maw is until you read the his name on IMDb. Right. <laughs> Squidward. Like... I have my issues with Infinity War, and I, I've said them plenty of times, and I, people need to just chill on it. It's okay. not better anyway. than Empire Strikes Back. It's not better than most of the top tier movies. Okay, well, but what you were saying? Oh, oh, oh! Like for yeah, for people like you or I, Tyler, it, it, it this is not on the caliber that can be our favorite movie. But I mean, but it definitely is. It is, but like per the per the 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 avant garde rules, right? Like <laughs> we have to have a different, like a better air quote better favorite movie than that right like, how dare you pick spielberg when you could have picked uh afonso cuaron or something yeah Benicio del toro like taika waititi yeah Ugh. it's because this is this is this is pop music i would like right right but bohemian rhapsody is still one of the greatest songs of all time. right but this is saying <laughs> this is saying that like justin timberlake is your favorite artist ever but i think that's a perfectly acceptable it, it is answer. justin timberlake's incredibly talented <laughs> but like if somebody like, comes up and it's like i am a jt stan even you are gonna look at him and be like uh, really, really? <laughs> he's yeah, good he's like, he's like really good but like really yeah he is he's a very good singer very good singer writes good beats but like stan exactly like best ever we always say best ever do you where does chris nolan fall in this dilemma as far as favorite directors I, no if you say a christopher nolan movie i'm gonna say outside of the dark knight trilogy because <coughs> that's exempt like i'm not allowed to say the dark knight is my favorite movie of all time um, right but if you say i think if there's a superhero movie that you can say is your favorite movie ever and you're safe it's one of the two first two dark knight movies it's watchman no watchman was a bad movie disagreed Watchmen was a bad movie oh Watchmen's great no <laughs> when was the last time you watched Watchmen been a while go back <laughs> but like if you say the Dark Knight or Batman Begins I, I feel you I get it but yeah but I, Chris, Chris Nolan movies I don't think you could say Inception can you say Memento yes can you say I think you could say Memento Dunkirk? I haven't seen Dunkirk tell you the truth I mean I don't know why it's a very weird I don't problem know why. I, did, I just didn't watch it I just I didn't I just had the, I had the opportunity just didn't go. I know. I remember like I had an afternoon where I saw that it was playing at the theater next to my house and I was like, I can go see Dunkirk. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I think you said Memento, I think you said Prestige, I think you could say Interstellar. I don't think you can say Inception. I don't think you can say Dark Knight. I think you can say Batman Begins though. Yeah, but people are gonna say the Dark Knight. Like that's the thing is like more so than I would say any of the MCU movies. I think people would say I think I think so there's MCU movies that are better than get they get credit for. Like I like think Winter Soldier Iron no, I think Winter Soldier. Oh, other way around, yeah. Yeah, it's the other way around. I think Iron Man is an example of this. I think uh, Spider-Man Homecoming is an example of this. And I think Avengers 1 is an example of this. And really all the Avengers movies are extremely good. Yeah. But, like, we did that top 10 episode, and I did not put Jurassic Park on my list at all. Really? Anywhere. Yeah, it did not make my top 10. I just forgot it existed. Like, that's the thing is, it's just, like, people ask me what my favorite movies are, and it's so far out of my mind for whatever reason, but then it comes on, and I'm like, oh, Jurassic Park is on. I will rearrange my day to watch Jurassic Park right now. Right, this is amazing. Like, I love this movie. I defend this movie. I, I put this I movie see. down as, like, the, the pinnacle of special effects. That or Jaws, yeah. I would, I, hmm, that's an interesting, so this movie's 25 years old, because I'm 25 years old. I would love love to have been able to see jaws when it was 25 years old here's why this beats jaws and special effects ethan is the shark is not on the screen that long the shark is a hundred times less real than rexy what do you mean like the shark is is much less believable than the t-rex why do you say that just the effects oh i think the shark is plenty believable no not compared to the effects in this movie not even close they're very good they're not this good but here's why this wins is because like what what jurassic park did was it did jaws but Every time you heard the Jaws theme, you saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex or the Raptors. Yeah. Oh man, we got we got to talk about it. We got to talk what? about John Williams. Da, 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 Just da, like. Da, 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 da. I know I say it every time John Williams does a movie that we review. This is some of John Williams' best work. This is the best one. I would agree with that, yeah. This is the best one, period. This has multiple amazing themes. This is the best one. I don't want to hear it about Indiana Jones. I don't want to hear it about Jaws. I don't want to hear it from Star Wars. This is it, Ethan. And you know, the part of the reason why I love the main theme from Jurassic Park so much actually came from the Jurassic World 2 trailers, where it was just played really stripped back on like an echoey piano. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And it's like you you know you, you get halfway through the trailer, you realize what happened, it's like do 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 and I'm like, Oh my god <laughs> But even when they're first oh when god, they're, they're, the theme when they first see the island, like when they first pull up in the helicopter, they're like bum bam 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 I'm like that is a fanfare right there. It is. This movie is full There's of There's definitely bops. although this this definitely has some John Williamsy moments where I'm like, that is a like a piece you wrote for the Empire and didn't use. <laughs> Like, happens like, to fit here. when the jeeps first pull up to the to the like when they're driving through the woods and they first pull up to the the um visitor center i'm like it's like some some like empire music they're driving through the woods i'm just like you didn't re- you you didn't write that for this <laughs> you you just sent them a pdf or whatever bum, 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 bada, bada. just some like incidental music for a scene of stormtroopers right <laughs> But no, I mean, John Williams put in another, like, front to back, the score for this movie is perfect. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It is amazing. Because it is perfect. It, it draws you it in. It characterizes that, that main theme. It, it is that feeling. Like, you feel what Alan and Ellie are feeling when they first see the dinosaur. Oh, yeah, where they're like, oh, my God. Yeah, when she, like, physically turns his head. He turns her head. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, she's looking at the yeah. leaf, and he's just Ellie. Ellie Ellie Ellie, 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 Ellie. Oh my God! This movie's amazing yeah. for that. For I mean, the score is amazing in this movie for that that reason. This movie's amazing. I love this movie so much. I also love it so much. This is. I would say I would go so far as to say that this is the best film. I don't even have to fight you on it. <laughs> oh no! I, I, you have to defend. We both, as a unit, have to defend ourselves. I mean, correct, but I was expecting an argument. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> No, I would say we're we're what? Uh, let me see our time. We're not anywhere close to that. Oh, okay. We'll get to it, but I I don't think there's any bait. So let's let's talk about characters then. Um, there's a bunch of people in this movie that like I I, I get it's like about Alan. Yeah, he's his, like, he's character. the yeah he is the character. But there's so many great characters in this movie. Like Richard Attenborough as John Hammond. The like this is a true story about Richard Attenborough as John Hammond. I thought that was Steven Spielberg. Like me as a child, not me as a grown up. I know for a fact that's not Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I could see that. Me as a child, like, I thought he was Steven Spielberg, and he ran the park, and he was, like, the director of the movie, and the movie was falling apart. <laughs> that's awesome. I, that's good. That's great. I mean, like, I, this was me as a kid who was, like, you know, looking at the screen every 10 minutes, and, like, a very young child. But that was, I was convinced of this fact. And, like, people would talk about Steven Spielberg being the greatest director of all time, and I would picture David Attenborough as John Hammond. Yes, David, no, David Attenborough? One of them is a nature documentary, and one of them is John Hammond. Is that not the same person? Because you've just messed me up big time. This, so there's David Attenborough and Richard Attenborough. This is Richard. Richard Attenborough is John Hammond. David Attenborough they, is the guy that does Blue Planet and Planet Earth. Yeah, are they not the same person? They're not the same person. That messes me up big yeah. time. Richard, David, wait. Oh, so they're brothers. Okay. They're bro- I, this, I was today years old when I learned that fact. They're brothers. But David Attenborough is the one that narrates Planet Earth. Can I, can I tell you something you didn't already know? What? Richard Attenborough's best reviewed movie of 1993. Is not Jurassic Park? Is not Jurassic Park. What is it? It is Shadowlands. But here's the interesting fact. Joseph Mazzello was also in Shadowlands. Joseph Mazzello, the guy that plays the, Tim? Yes. He was the bass player for Queen in Bohemian Rhapsody. Was he Fun really? Fact. Yep. He was also... Well, the, the 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 1993 film I was referring to was directed by Richard Attenborough. I don't know that he was in it. Hmm, that is interesting. I did not know that. I have never heard of Shadowlands. Me neither. But it's about C.S. Lewis, and I think I've seen it. He was not in it. Correct. He directed yes. it. Yes. But on his filmography, it looks like he's in it. But he directed it. I have seen this. It's about C.S. Lewis? Yep. Sh- sure you watched it for class then i did it was very good i believe it who played c.s lewis well jackie lewis that was played by none other than anthony hopkins so not only is he god but he is also godin god god in Odin. Odin. He's Odin. Father of Thor. He's also Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he is. Isn't that scary? Yes. He was terrifying as Hannibal Lecter when I was like 10. Still terrifying, Ethan. Still terrifying. I believe it. That movie has not become less terrifying. Yes, over Richard. The year. Lord Richard Attenborough. R.I.P. Um, really? Yeah. Why does everybody have to be 2014. Dead? He died recently. Mm. He died like right before Jurassic World was made because he was going to be in it and then died. They, were, they, they replaced him in Jurassic World Part 2, didn't they? With, like, somebody with his else partner, who dies. yeah, the uh, supposed partner. But, like, I love all of these characters. Like, I love Sam Neill as Alan Grant. I love Laura Dern as Ellie. I love uh, Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm. I love Jeff Goldblum in everything. Would you want Jeff Goldblum to just be your 
friend. Yeah, I can imagine that's probably pretty entertaining. I think that he would be a good friend to have. Yeah, I would agree. I was reading uh, a story on Twitter the other day about a girl who told a man in like a bar that he looked exactly like Jeff Goldblum. And then her friend came over and was like, yeah, that was Jeff Goldblum you were just talking to. <laughs> 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 and he was like, apparently Jeff Goldblum said to her, it was like, oh, thank you so much. I've heard Jeff Goldblum's a very handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> because you're him. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I love Jeff Goldblum. I would love Jeff Goldblum to just, yeah, be... Like, I would love to have his cell phone number in, in a capacity that I could use, it, that I could just text Jeff and be like, hey, Jeff, Jeffy, M- Mr. Goldblum, what's up, dude? Do you know how Bill Murray just, like, goes to parties? Yeah. Like, like if you have a party, there is always a small chance that Bill Murray will be there. Yeah, that he'll just show up. Do you think Jeff Goldblum is the next version of this? I think there's a solid chance. I think you might be right. I think you might need to look at somebody a little younger, though. You think old, old, old Bloom? Well, I don't think Jeff Goldblum is, like, that much younger than Bill Murray. Really? Yeah. Well, now I'm I curious. think that there's a solid chance that, like, Jeff Goldblum kind of stops being in the public eye around the same time as Bill Murray. He's 66. Bill Murray is, like... He's older than that. Oh, not really. really? 68. Oh, wow. wow. Jeff Goldblum is aging well. Yeah. Oh, my God. That dude is handsome as like can gray be. Like, you know gray-haired Jeff Goldblum that, like, buys into streetwear. It works. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Like, you just Google Jeff Goldblum. Oh man, this is this is a good this is this is a good sentence right here. As there are no practic practically no records for Jeff Goldblum being a gay, obviously he is straight. <laughs> I mean, I just I just thought that was an interesting sentence that they referred to him, like, referred to him as potentially a gay. Okay, <laughs> there's a great picture here of Jeff Goldblum with the gray hair and the glasses in like a like a normal looking black suit with a black and white polka dotted shirt and a black and white gator skin tie. I'm looking at this same <laughs> photograph. I am this photograph. Like... <laughs> this is my mood. This is going. It. I'm showing somebody this. I have to. <laughs> I'm showing somebody this. You know who else is aging well? Steve Carell. You think Steve Carell aged well, huh? Yeah. Interesting posit. Yeah, I do. Like, I thought he was looking not so good. Really? Hang on. Yeah. I just sent this picture, I think. I don't know how to send stuff on Skype anymore. Since they updated Skype. Do you, What do you think of... Uh, ooh, there's a few things we can talk about just as far as moving. Yeah, I sent you this picture of Steve Carell. Oh, that is a good shot. Like, I, And it's possibly just the fact that he always kind of looked like that, but he was so weird looking as Michael Scott. I think Michael Scott was a bad thing i i am anti michael scott michael scott is so uncomfortable i it, it hurt like that. especially early like early early like first season it hurts to watch that show like you watch the scott's tots episode and like it's, it's impossible so uncomfortable because your spine just hurts it is it is the the whole like he has to be cringy to be interesting thing it got harder the longer they went because he had to be cringier than he'd ever been before and like the scott's tots things was like why did you why did you share that why did you do that and see that's why Parks and Rec were for, will forever be a better show because Ron underwent like interesting character growth. They all did. They all developed well. Right, Ron's the boss though. Right. But I think like not to be overlooked, they started with like Ron and really for characters. They started with like Ron and uh Leslie, what is Rashida Jones character name? And Ron, Leslie, Ann, and uh Tom. Yeah. And by the end of it, you are, those characters are extremely well developed. Right. But you also really care about Ben. You really care about Donna. That's exactly what I'm saying. That was the point I was right. getting to was that like, you care about Jerry, you care about Chris Pratt, you care about, uh, right. And, and the difference between Jerry. Uh, okay. So this is, this is why parts the other reason person works the, as the, uh, better than the office because Jerry gets the payoff. I still feel bad for Toby Flanderson. I like Toby. But Jerry gets the payoff. Yeah. Where Jerry's like married to the hot wife. Right. And just everything works out for him. I guess you haven't seen the last season no i'm not interested in seeing the last season. you should really see the last season not a bad idea like it, it the last season is very um it's very donna and jerry heavy but in a good mm-hmm. way like they their characters both come very far in the last season oh uh, anyway we got on this so, from jeff goldblum yes yeah, so some some tangent information i want to uh share with you um i have not watched it i don't know if you have i've seen it i think muted but i haven't heard it new captain marvel trailer dropped this week um I would I would like for us to both watch it right now in full audio. I mean, we don't have to share it with the fan, uh, and then report back our immediate thoughts on okay. this. Is this okay with yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, just don't like play your audio. No, why would I do that? Captain Marvel trailer. All right, I'm muting. It... Well, no, I'm not gonna mute anything. Captain Marvel it's trailer, trailer number two, 2019. All right, Hold on. I'm watching it. I need to change. There we go. Play. Is that you, Law? Yes. Let me know when you're ready. Yo. 
Okay. Okay. I need initial thoughts from you. I'm now excited for this movie. I am too. I, I hated think, the first trailer. I did too. I hated and it. And I think there's a there's a real Credence Barebone feel to it. What does that mean? It, like, Crimes of Grindelwald is all about Credence figuring out who he is. Yeah. And that's like a problem. So is Force Awakens and Last Jedi, and that's not a problem. Yeah, I think you've got a you got a worthwhile story arc here. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So she's a Kree. She's found by the yes, Kree. She's, found she's a human the found Kree. by the Kree. So the Kree is a Guardians tie-in, right? Like that's Ronan is in it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm Ronan. The I'm accuser. making sure that I knew why. That was okay, cool. Anyway, but Ronan is explained in the first Guardians movie as like a Cree extremist, right? Like the Cree are okay for the most part, right? Um, I think it looks really good. I think that they are playing up the almost buddy cop aspect of her and Fury. I think that there is value to be seen. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the buddy cop aspect is going to be there. I'm curious what name was on that cat's collar. I swear to God, Did if you, it's you Minerva McGonagall. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was Crookshanks. Um, it lo- I thought it said Odin. That's the wrong unit. Did it say Odin? I thought so. I didn't, I did not get a good look at it, but I think that there is something there. Oh, sure. Because this was the first time watching it, like, full screen. The good screen. Yeah, yeah. That looks so cool. That's much better. And the, the set piece where she is above Earth in space, like, the rest of the movie doesn't even matter to me. That was a really well done trailer because I got enough to, to interest me, but I still feel like I have no idea what is going to happen in the movie. No. I do know that Jude Law's in it, and and he might be better as Dumbledore than he is in this part. But that's okay. It's entirely possible. But Jude Law is still delightful in everything. I watched The Holiday the other day. That isn't... The Holiday with Jack Black? That is an underrated, like, Christmas rom-com. Mm, I think people love that movie. It's still underrated. That is, like, almost Love Actually tier. That is a really good movie. That is one of the one of those movies that there's a scene in that movie where I will cry every single time. Every time I see it. But I love Jude Law. I've, I've loved Jude Law forever. Jude Law is delightful in everything. Jude Law is delightful in everything. He's a good Watson. He is. I am excited for Holmes and Watson as well. I am also excited for Holmes and Watson with uh, John there's C. Riley and Will there's Ferrell. There's a probably sixty percent chance that it's just an enormous dumpster fire. Oh yeah, but there is a forty percent say... chance that it is like a god tier comedy. Here's my question for you, Ethan. Ron Burgundy is being revived for a podcast. Really? Yes. Like by there will be a Ron by there Ron Burgundy podcast produced by Funny or Die starring Will Ferrell. Okay. Are you pro that? Yeah. You are in favor. Okay. I think that um they've done a pretty good job so far with the things I've seen from them. Well, that's Will Ferrell's comedy. comedy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is I, I think that they will treat it properly. Um, and I think it's just an, an interesting new direction when you, but I got scared real quick. Cause when you said Ron Bergen is being revived, I thought you meant like we were going to get a, like a, like a dumb and dumber or Anchorman three, like a Ron, like a Ron Burgundy prequel. Oh God. No. With like somebody else. Oh, I would be really sad about that. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. Um, but no. So I think I, I didn't. Okay. So here it is. Yokes. Ladies, gentlemen, those beyond the binary, um, I think Step Brothers is I'd at best. Ooh, you're gonna have a problem with I that. I've just never like I've never loved Step Brothers the way I loved Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights is there's a, an exceptionally there's good a comedy. big step between them, and I think the likelihood is that we with Holmes and Watson we get something that is probably slightly worse than Step Brothers. Oh, I think I think almost certainly Holmes and Watson will be a bad film. But there is a chance that we get the next Talladega Nights. I think that anytime you put those two people together, there's a chance the next Talladega Nights happens. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But that makes me wonder, you pull up other Will Ferrell films that you know he's done other comedy duo films that I always like. He does a lot of Mark Wahlberg films. Did you like the other guys? Did you like Daddy's I Home? I did not like Daddy's Home. I loved the other guys. What about Daddy's Home 2 with Mel Brooks and John Lithgow? I haven't seen it. I have not seen most of it. And what I have seen has been like definitely not to the same caliber as as other films but i loved oh my god the last certified fresh movie that uh will ferrell was in not certified fresh the last certified fresh was a lego movie and the last fresh movie he was in was sleeping with other people as a producer and welcome to me as a producer both in 2015 will ferrell does some real bummers you mean like really bad films? yeah like not all of his movies are great just looking at this list right here there is like he is incredibly prolific yes he is in so yes. many movies well he just loves acting loves it. He's like Samuel L. Jackson. Here's something. Here's an interesting thing. I was under the impression that this particular movie, and I'm about to tell you the title of, was utterly rotten. Like everybody disliked it, zero percent, or like maybe an eleven. 
Seventy percent Blades of Glory. People love Blades of Glory. I love Blades of Glory. People love Blades of Glory. You got uh, you got I uh, did. You got Will Ferrell. You got Jenna Fisher. You got uh, Will Arnett. You got John Heater. Oh yeah. You got Blades of Glory is good. Um, Semi Pro was okay. Could have used John C. Riley. Could have used another guy. Semi Pro is a twenty-two. Yeah, it's bad. Bad movie. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Is Wedding it. Crashers. Wedding Crashers. Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson. I was gonna say, that's Will not Ferrell. a Will Ferrell movie. Oh, he's in, he's it. in it, but it's not a Will Ferrell movie. That's a Vince Vaughn movie. That is a Vince Vaughn a and one. white dude movie. And Owen Wilson. They did You, Me, and Dupree, right? That's Vince Vaughn. Maybe. No. Was it? Mmm. Gonna have to look that up. Was that even Owen Wilson? It was Owen Wilson. I don't think it was Vince Vaughn. Was though. it Jim Carrey? Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon. I like Matt Dillon. Who was Matt Dillon? I like Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon, Kate Hudson. Yeah. That's that girl's name? Yeah. I thought Kate Hudson was like that fancy black singer girl. What? Whitney Houston? Jennifer Hudson. Who the hell is Jennifer Hudson? What? Is that not a person? Who the hell is Jennifer Hudson? What do you mean? What? I mean, hold on. I mean, who the hell is Jennifer Hudson? <laughs> I, I don't know. Get out. I don't know how else Am to I explain making this, this up? Uh, Matt <laughs> Dillon. Matt Dillon was um, freaking... Jennifer Hudson won the third season of American Idol, Ethan. I didn't watch American Idol, Tyler. <laughs> I, watched, oh, yeah. I watched this first two seasons. She won the third. So you saw Kelly and Clay? Mm -hmm. No, Kelly and Ruben. Mm -hmm. What? God's name. Are you trying to tell me about Matt Dillon? Yes, he's Dallas from The Outsiders. I've never watched The Outsiders. Yeah, the movie. Did you have to read it in class? Nope. Oh, you didn't read The Outsiders? Nope. I read it in Elizabeth Chapman's class. Yo, Elizabeth Chapman. I ran into her at CVS the other day. It was like three months ago. Still Elizabeth Chapman. I thought she got married. Chapman's her married name. Oh. She was so young when we knew. Age was 23. She finished school at Clemson, got married, and then uh, started teaching. Anyway, he is like the, not the main, never mind. This isn't going to be anything. You've never seen The Outsiders? You ever read The Outsiders? No. I, thought, I don't even know what it's about. I thought you had. Mm -mm. Oh, it's like the coming of age novel. What? Yeah. Stay gold, pony boy. No. Yeah. Is that why, is that why that one kid in high school got pony boy tattooed across his, uh, what's that? Your hips. Yeah. The front of your yeah, hips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. All along the Outsiders. No, nah, so it's got Matt Dillon, Ralph Macchio, Patrick Swayze, Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Tom Cruise. This looks like, uh, what's that movie? A Walk to Remember. It looks like A Walk to Remember without the girl. It's not. Oh, that's, that's what I'm seeing. It's about pictures. like, it's like, um, I can't remember the name of anything today. Gangs, musical, New York, West, West Side Story. Story. It's West Side Story, but like teenagers. They're teenagers in West Side Story. West Side Story is Romeo and Juliet. This is West Side Story without the Romeo and Juliet. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the this way is... from your first cigarette to your last dying day. The Outsiders day. is like just. Like Grease. Just Montagues and Capulets. No girl? No girl. I've never seen Grease. Hmm. These guys are described in this synopsis as greasers. Yeah, they're the greasers and the socias. Rich ah. kids and poor kids. Gotcha. They hate each other. They're gangs. Ponyboy Curtis and Dallas Winston. Dallas is like the bad I've always wanted to be a bad Don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jurassic Park. I love What's Jurassic your favorite Park. part of this I, movie? I think my favorite part is... The part where the raptors get eaten by the Tyrannosaurus right at the right end. Right at the end. And then the Tyrannosaurus does the like. Roar! And the like the, the Jurassic Park banner falls in front of yeah. it. And like, it's like they were making GIFs before GIFs were GIFs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> that was such a. And there's so many long shots of uh, profiles in this movie. The cinematography really is incredible. Well, I mean, Spielberg. Especially, like... Right. Especially for the creation of GIFs. It's Spielberg 18 years after Jaws. Um, like, that he has had. Yeah. That dude has had a long time at this point already to develop his craft. To be like, I'm going to do better than Jaws. Can you imagine being alive? No, you can't. When Jaws, like pre-Jaws. No, no, because Jaws was the blockbuster. Right. Like, what did people do? It's not like, I say that like we're so good about like going to the movies. They went to the movies. Once or twice a week. Went to the old Nickelodeon. 50% of the world saw Gone with the Wind. I know, that's wild to me. Like over Have a you seen Dr. People. Shivago? I, yeah. Obviously. It's like six hours long. Don't at me. I've never seen it. Yeah. Do you know me? It's like six hours long. Yeah. It's it's really long. Yes. So, lots of movies. Gone with the Wind's really long. Not six hours It's long. four hours. I don't even know how to spell Dr. Shivago. Dr. Shivago's six hours long? I don't know. Dr. Shiv. I don't know how to spell Shivago. Z-H-I-V-A-J-O. Ah, there it is. 1965. It is three hours mm, and 17 what? minutes. Okay. Well, that's not six hours. No. Then. Gone with the Wind is longer. Gone with the Wind has an intermission. It's two tapes. No, like, there's a part of the movie where you get up and, like, walk out of the theater. Oh, that's weird. You don't have to, but you can, to go, like, pee or get a martini. Half the world saw it. But yes, I've seen Dr. Zhivago. It's very good. There is... Did you know that that movie is the reason... I learned this in, uh furniture sales training today that movie is the reason that the sleigh bed has been the best-selling bed since that movie really 
Yep. Uh, my dad would have said that was one of his favorite movies, uh, but I don't think he's ever seen more than 18 minutes of it. <laughs> I think that he would put it on and go to sleep. It was the same with, uh, there's another really long movie that he loved, Lawrence of Arabia, three and a half hours. And one time- What is what what movies has Ron Burgundy seen? Not Ron Burgundy, Ron Swanson seen. Patton? Patton, Bridge of the River Kwai, and Herbie Fully Loaded. <laughs> Herbie Fully Loaded. <laughs> But yeah, there was one point where I asked Dad, I was like, have you ever seen Lawrence of Arabia all the way through from start to finish? He was like, no. God, no. Under no circumstances. I've seen every part of it, never put together. That's so funny. Because he, he was just like, he was a guy, he could not stay awake during a movie at all. Like, and just, yeah, so he would watch an hour and a half of it, and then the next time it was on, he would watch the back hour and a half. But uh, why, why Dr. Zhivago? I'm curious. Why am I asking yeah. about it? Because of the sleigh bed thing. That's why I asked you about it. I went to sales training today. Oh, and they, like, we told you about, about that? Dr. Zhivago. Gotcha. Yeah. I thought you went to couch training. Well, I just went to general product knowledge training gotcha and the guy that we were trained by this is actually really an interesting thing i don't know how interesting it'll be for the general populace but he was before there was like the internet and you could talk to like a wayfair employee you could call a 1-800 like dr furniture and he was the first guy to do that job really so like if you had questions about like buying furniture and didn't want to talk to like a salesperson in a store <laughs> you would call him <laughs> and he was like the only guy <laughs> he was jeeves right he was jeeves <laughs> That's hysterical. Why wouldn't you just talk to the salesman? I don't know. I mean, it's still the same. Now what people do is they shop Wayfair and then they come in and talk to me and like test me. It's very frustrating. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you but you yeah, also in... you also walk into work and at your new job whenever you get a new job and they're like, um, excuse me, where's the Kool Aid over oh, there? Yeah, Can I, I have a, like Kool-Aid a gallon? Drinker. Yeah, I drink the Kool Aid. Like, you had your new job at Grand for this. three days when you were like, I mean, what you should really be sleeping on at night. <laughs> Is whatever's most comfortable for Granted, you. Granted, I have to do the same I'm, thing to my girlfriend all the time. He's in nursing school, and I'm like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Do not want to know why I shouldn't be taking Tylenol right now. I have no interest in what you're telling me. I have a headache. Stop. She's just trying to help. No, she's anyway, not. Anyway, there's a scene in Dr. Zhivago where they're laying like in a literal sleigh. Yeah. And so they surveyed people every month. They surveyed over 2,500 people, uh, different people, and asked them what is the most appealing type of bed and why and from like 1977 to 2012 every single month the most the over 50 percent of people would respond and say a sleigh bed and uh over 60 percent of those people would say because of dr Zhivago. interesting i hate sleigh beds i think they're hideous they are hideous i want a four poster bed with curtains and i want it because of harry potter <laughs> that's exactly what i want like that is what harry potter sleeps in that is also what like kings sleep in do you i mean i can hook you up with that (laughs) this is me looking up at at a room that is not gonna fit a four poster bed you can put a four poster in there you could only put a four poster in there but you could (laughs) yeah (laughs) i remember when chris millahan had that loft apartment he had a four he had a four poster because his bedroom was like 30 feet by 30 feet here's what i learned recently i don't know if i learned this maybe i'm even wrong about this but i've always thought it was called a four poster not because it had four posts but because you could put four posters around it i think it's called a four poster because of the posts because (laughs) i think most beds uh, have no <laughs> posts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, man. Fun fact, our friend Frank is playing Tabletop Simulator right now. And I don't know if I have anything else to add to this conversation. Oh, but we're about that time again anyway. Well, I mean, there's so. 15 minutes of you eating pizza. <laughs> but <laughs> So this Jurassic Park, like, it is such a good movie that, but, they, but there's not like, there's not a whole lot to it. It's like, there's a story, mm-hmm. Um, you know, Alan and Ellie fall in love. Or I guess we're already in love, fall back in love. Alan learns that he wants kids. Uh, Jeff Gold. Yep. Bloom learns something. To be sexy. Uh, he doesn't really get much development. He was 100% correct. Like, he went in yeah. correct. Like, I, I, I'm here to tell you the dinosaur park's a terrible idea. And I was right. <laughs> right. Life finds a way. Life uh, eats uh, humans. Yeah. And then he goes back in the second movie. The second movie's about him. As Alan's it not even be. in it. Well. Alan's in the third sorry. one. I love Jurassic Park 3. There's like a like a meeting of all the people in the world that love Jurassic Park 3. And it's like me and three dudes named Chip in like a room <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hates that movie. Uh, really? Jurassic Park 3? Yeah. It's it's garbage. I mean, it's terrible, but I love it. I don't even know why. I could not tell you what it's even remotely about. It is about uh, this family that goes like parasailing near Isla Nublar, and the, the, the dinosaurs eat the boat. What? Well, the dinosaurs eat the people off the boat, so the people in the on the sail are just like stuck up in the air as the boat careens toward the island. Ah! So they have to like cut the line and 
purple eye and it's like a kid and and like a like a young adult like a 20 something this is this the whole movie or is this like the premise? This is the first 45 seconds. Okay. I was picturing a whole film like this. No. I was, I was impressed. I was like, dang, that sounds like a no, really so, interesting. So, yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's a, it's a kid and like a, no, I forgot where the 20 something came in. He was not on the parasail. It's a kid and like a, like an adult that are parasailing and they have to cut the cord and they let crash land on the island and the kid's parents sucker Alan Grant into coming back to the island to find the kid. That's the guy from this movie. Yeah. Sam Neill. Sam Neill. Okay. Sam Neill's not dead, right? Uh, no, he was, um, he was heck in Hunt for the Wilder People. Yes. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yep. Uh, okay. So we need to, we've already discussed a ranking for this film. Do you have a breakfast food for this film? I was thinking, uh, herbivore steaks. Herbivore steaks? Yeah. What does that mean? Like herbivorous dinosaur slaughtered and turned into <laughs> steak or lamb chops, <laughs> lamb chops for breakfast, <laughs> lamb chops and frog's eggs. <laughs> Yeah. T Rex doesn't want to be fed. He wants to hunt. That's true. I mean, you know, if you were a T Rex, what would you want to do? I would want to hunt. Ow. Oh my God. That hurt my eye. What'd you do? So there's this like makeup sponge on my desk that the dog chewed up and. I was like, Emily just always smacks her face with this. So I started smacking my face with it, and the makeup got in my eye. And it hurt. <laughs> you know, okay, so as long as we're talking about a breakfast food for this movie. Lamb chop! A couple, a couple weeks ago, we got some kind of, I wouldn't say hate mail, but more of some some uh, constructive criticism. That we didn't talk that we didn't about, talk the, about movie the movie enough. enough. And then we talked about the nothing but the movie with the Crimes of Grindelwald episode. We talked a lot about Wreck-It Ralph 2. But today, we have talked talked almost not at all about Jurassic Park. I disagree. I think we've talked a good amount Jurassic Park. We just keep saying the same things about Jurassic Park over and over again. Really? Yeah, we could say a lot of things, but we haven't been saying most of them. We've just kind of been repeating ourselves about the movie. And honestly, to tell you the truth, it's because this movie's so freaking dope. It is so good. I guess there's like a, a conversation to be had that we don't have about like the deeper depths of why it's so good. And maybe that's valuable to have. But what the show is, what a ship really is what the black pearl is is just like two friends going to the to the bookstore after the movies and talking about the movie they just saw and then going where the conversation goes right and i'm with you I'm that's just, what the black pearl I'm really just is addressing that is that like there is a lot to say about jurassic park and most of it is stuff that we're not necessarily qualified or particularly interested in saying i, I think what's important is i enjoyed this movie unapologetically if you want to so. talk about I, the depths of this movie i'm going to give you some advice you the listener patreon Dot no. Com slash bacon no. Dough. Well, I will give that advice to me. You can go to patreon.com slash bacon and eggs and uh, pledge $5 to join the Discord, and I will talk to you about Jurassic Park all freaking day long. Um, yeah. I will have. Yeah. It does not have a different job. <laughs> I will have no problem doing that. I love this movie almost as much as I love my Bose QC35 to wireless headphones. <laughs> not a sponsor. <laughs> but what I'm going to tell you to do is I'm going to tell you right now to at John Negroni on Twitter and ask him why Jurassic Park is a good movie. He will tell you. He will tell you. Or you can at me on Twitter as well, and I, and I will also be happy to tell you. But I would love to hear John Negroni's input on this told to someone else. But also, you can figure out pretty easily why this is a great movie by doing one simple thing, and that is watching Jurassic Park. It holds up. If you've seen it, it's, so it's good. really good the second time, or third time, or fourth time, or like this is probably the 32nd time I've seen it. I had a question for you how many movies do you think you've seen and here's my metric less than or greater than 1000 i do not know tell you the truth it's a lot i've seen a lot of movies as well i think i'm in the less than 1000 category that's like a movie a day for four years or for like three years well, we've watched like 75 movies just for the show do, but do you feel like we've scratched seven percent of your overall watched films oh i've seen i had seen over 50 percent of the movies we've watched for the show so far before the show right um, but so I really don't know. I don't know. Because John Negroni earlier today said that he had seen like 162 films this year. That's a lot. And granted, he's like a film critic. That's like every other That day. seems like so many movies. He he what, he goes to the movies a lot more than I do. Because I don't think he has to oh, pay yeah. to go to the movies. Well, he gets invited a lot yeah. anyway. Um, but he like makes money off. I mean, I guess I also make money off. Of <laughs> going to the reviewing films. films. <laughs> right. But like, I don't, I'm not like. Well, we could make more if you go to patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. But I'm not like a writer. Like my, my, uh, I'm not paid per opinion per 
movie. Right. Um, I would say the the uh, first number that came into my head was seven hundred and fifty. Okay. Because I took that, I did that like Reddit thing that was like the Reddit top two fifty movies, and I had seen like two hundred and four of them. Really? Yeah. Finishing up. But I've also seen plenty of movies more than once. Yeah, that's that's my thing. Is I, I've rewatched a like, lot. I've seen Jurassic Park. I don't know how many times, but it's it's over twenty five. Right. Sometimes when I rewatch a film, I'll like get mad at myself because I'm like I could be experiencing something new right now. But then other times I'll watch a new film and be like, I would have so much more enjoyed watching Avengers again right now. Avengers, the first one? Yeah, that's probably a bad example. But um, this is the but this you know is the I mean? kind of movie that is like a benchmark movie for that. Like, there's part of me that's like, would I've enjoyed watching Jurassic Park more than this? Right. This has been my problem with the Force Awakens is I never rewatch it because I always psych myself out of it. Well, I don't. I don't watch. I don't rewatch nearly as much as a lot of our fan base does no no neither do i i i'm less interested in rewatching a film like there there are people in our discord and i'm not saying anything for or against us but there are people in our discord that have seen like multiple disney renaissance musicals over 30 times each right they're like just anytime they t- turn the tv on they're like i'm gonna throw one of those movies on one of those like eight movies right like i'm going to watch the line to me i'm just like again. why would you do that there are so many more movies you can watch because bridge over river kwai is way harder to watch than lion king i'm not saying you need to watch bridge over the river kwai if war movies aren't your thing they're never going to be your thing don't try to force it a lot of people are going to tell you that a lot of the best movies ever made are war movies and a lot of there are a lot of great war movies but if you don't like war movies that's okay you don't have to like war movies a lot of people don't you know there's a war movie i i genuinely enjoyed that I feel like uh, didn't do super well and I'm not a big war movie guy but I really enjoyed Fury the tank movie I did not enjoy Fury that much there have not been many recent war movies that I enjoy glorious bastards and there are very few movies I enjoy about recent wars I like the Chris Kyle movie American Sniper Oh, it was all right. I think Bradley Cooper deserves all the Oscars. I think that that's one of Bradley Cooper's weaker performances. Yeah, I, I believe he deserves best <laughs> performance in every role. But, like, I've seen three versions of A Star is Born that are not the one that came out this year. I was underwhelmed by that one. Uh, I do think we need to wrap up, though. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, just don't spend 15 minutes eating next episode, then. You said it wasn't an issue. Well, it's not, but then if you're going to, like, <laughs> stop the conversation and start getting all, like, well, we're out of time. We're not out of time. I just, um, I'm having a hard time thinking of things to say. I'm really, I'm running out of thoughts, and I don't want to just, I don't want to just fill time for the sake of filling time. I feel like I'm at a safe stopping No, I'm not either, but you asked me a question, then we started a conversation. Okay. It's all good. Uh, so... Did we decide on a breakfast food? Is it lamb chops? I guess so. Go- goat chops? Goat chop? Is a goat not a lamb? Goats are not lambs. Lambs are sheep. Oh, man. I knew that. Did you? I did. Sheeps are not goats? Sheeps are not goats, no. Rams are not goats. Zodiac people. <laughs> oh, interesting. Anyway. Okay. You being so a Virgo works. or whatever, stop putting the goat emoji. It does not make you the goat. Virgo's a ram. I think. Tom Brady's the goat. Did you see the freaking Tom Brady video? Where he was like, it was all about getting a thousand, thousand yards. Russian rods and I'm out. It just like hops in his Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> outside of his mansion <laughs> i mean he doesn't have to work you know that no right? i know like, but he's like he's parked at in his like <laughs> his like stone garage not garage stone right. driveway right it's not like he's at the stadium or anything he pulls up like in front of like a british manor house from downton abbey every day <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady figured it out. <laughs> Make a ton of money, marry somebody who makes more money than you for being hot. <laughs> right. Like, for being the best at being good looking ever. Yeah, like like one of the top supermodels of all time. Anyway, so yeah, I think we decided on goat chops and frog's eggs. God, that sounds like a disgusting breakfast, but I really think it does describe the film. Because uh, there's nothing better. Oh, oh. Uh, I will say, I was looking forward to the sequel featuring all dogs, Jurassic Bark. Didn't happen. Hadn't happened yet. I'm also looking forward to the sequel featuring all trees, Jurassic Bark. Dr- oh, 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 oh. That was called <laughs> oh, The Happening. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Is that, is that a Sawyer? It is. It is. So um. Yes, fair enough. So how do you think of Newman as a villain? I don't think... I mean, I, here's my thing about Newman as a villain. Because well, you can't say the Raptors I don't is the think, villain, though. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. Right, they're just doing their thing. Um, I think he's an excellent villain. I don't know that he was better than, like... What are the villains that we have right now? Grindelwald? Grindelwald? Yeah. Grindelwald Voldemort. He's a terrible villain. He doesn't succeed. Whom? Newman. No, Dennis you're right. He gets eaten. He eaten gets eaten. By the the uh... only person he manages to kill is uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Muldoon. Yes. 
Samuel. Oh man, most... we didn't talk about Samuel Jackson in this movie at all. Samuel L. Jackson as whatever the heck his name is. Hold on to is your butt. Great. He's just like just the like angry programmer. Right. I don't know what his job is. Why are they hiring computer nerds who don't know how to use computers? He's the like he's the manager. He's oh, like the okay. operations okay. officer. Then and then he knew how to use the computers. He fixed the problem. Just Nedry like put a virus in it. Idiot. Yeah. Um. I really I, I thought the villain was fine. Let's talk about our overall ranking real quick. I think we both agree this is better than Toy Story Three. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Do we need? Would, do we need to argue why? Um, I mean, not really. I'm ready for the all pig. It's just like a Jurassic. It's port. just like a like a. It's a size and scale thing. Like this gets the same bump the Titanic does. Yeah, I don't know that. I I mean, obviously. I have to look forward and talk to the rest of the things we review this year, and we only know a few of those. But I do not foresee this holding the number one position. No, probably not. I think it will for a few weeks because we have one more week and then like a Christmas special, right? Yep. Which, by the way, everybody, next week we're reviewing Miracle. Are we? About the, I'm excited. Yes, about the U.S. men's hockey team. Uh, sports movie and about winter sports. It's Christmas themed. And then we're doing our Christmas special. We're going to talk about all three Grinch movies. So if you have not seen the uh, Bacon Crisp, Crisp, pretzel crisps one yet you need to go ahead and go see that one are you talking about but if not I'm talking about you talking about the grinch with buffalo pretzel chips yeah i said bacon <gasps> uh yeah it was good so we're talking about all three grinches yeah but it's also just going to be like a christmas traditions episode so if you if you don't get a chance to see it it's about the same thing yep. uh-huh. i'm also looking forward to the like high school cop sequel jurassic narc oh my god stop <laughs> jurassic stop <laughs> Oh, okay, man. so this is oh, better than California Wildfire One, Jurassic Spark. This is better than Toy Story Three, if for no reason other than I want to annoy Seamus. <laughs> it's also part of it. He's like na 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 boo boo. Because Seamus, <laughs> who has described himself as a true yoke, is going to listen to this episode, and we're going to get an angry group tweet. <laughs> But but he's wrong. Like the truth, the fact of the matter is, the Toy Story films as a as a trilogy, as a series, undeniably better. Yes. Uh, but, but Seamus is going he, to go in his vlog and be like, "This week, bacon and eggs, a podcast <laughs> from America, described Jurassic Park as being better than Toy Story." The story's hard to say, isn't it? You had it all. In Toy uh, yeah, Story. I couldn't do his. Uh, you had it. He has such a particular way of talking. <laughs> I love why. I love how he, love how he shouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh my god we did there's an important jurassic park detail that we did not mention um if you have never read jurassic park the book by michael Crichton, make sure that you are not tired hungry or need to use the bathroom before picking it up because you will not set it down until you have finished the whole thing yeah you will it is also, immediately excellent you and will also pee yourself because it is the only book that has truly ever scared me oh like man. the movie is not a horror movie the book is a horror book like that is stephen king level stuff yeah but it's a Amazing. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Um, if you want to buy stuff, there's a link below. Several of them. If you want to donate, go to patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. Join our Discord. It's freaking dope. There's also a link below. If you want to find me or Tyler on Twitter or Instagram, there's a link below. Uh, if you want to do our music, there's a link below. And if you want to find Vaishan, who does our graphics, there's a link below. I've been Ethan Edgehill. He's been Tyler Carlin. And until next week, Arrivederci. All major theme parks have delays. When they opened Disneyland in 1956, nothing worked.